There's so many other you know, ways locally, abroad, that, that in which people can make a difference and you know, find also a purpose and meaning for themselves. And I, do, I want to just leave you with a thought um, that I think one of the obstacles, one of the ways we psych ourselves out, is we think that the problems today are so vast that anything we do is just going to be a drop in the bucket. You know, and in a sense, there's something to that. There, it's quite easy to sponsor one child, one girl somewhere to get an education. You know, one girl like Daimanchu to get an education uh, quite cheaply. But there are 60 million kids worldwide who should be in school and art. That's not a problem that we're going to solve um, in this country, in this decade. Um, it's, a, it's a huge, hard problem. And so, and to that extent, anything we do is going to feel like a drop in the bucket. Likewise, something similar with refugees. It's fantastic that this university is going to take four Syrian refugees and educate them. That is awesome. But the, but there are um, about 60 million displaced people worldwide, displaced by conflict, and the highest number since World War II. Um, there are 20 million people facing starvation in just four countries, South Sudan, uh, Somalia, uh, Nigeria, and Yemen, and they will lead to, to more displacement. These are huge problems, so in some sense what we do is going to be a drop in the bucket, but I, I want to leave you with the thought that drops in the bucket do have value. I've become a believer in them, and I've become a believer in them in part because of uh, somebody I know who left an impression on me, uh, Vladislav Kristofovic. Uh, Vladislav Kristofovic was a East European refugee, uh, fled um, Romania, was in a concentration camp in Yugoslavia, uh, almost executed, uh, made his way to France after World War II, could not get a work permit, uh, so was doing jobs illegally, and felt that neither he nor his yet unborn children would ever be fully accepted in French society. And so he began to dream of coming to the US. And he explored various ways of doing that. He uh, pursued a fake marriage with an American citizen, American woman, as a, as a way of, of getting a visa. And that seemed to be going along just great, and then it, it collapsed. Uh, but then he was cleaning hotel rooms illegally f um, without a work permit. And one of the rooms he was cleaning belonged to a young American woman from uh, Portland, Oregon, um, working for the Marshall Plan. Well, she, uh, she liked him. She convinced her parents uh, back in Portland, uh, who had never met him, of course, uh, and their church in Portland to sponsor his way to the U.S. This was completely taking a risk on him. I mean, he could have, he was from Eastern Europe at a time when Eastern Europe was the great enemy. He could have been a spy, he could have been a saboteur. And in the best of situations, there were approximately as many refugees then as there are now. This wasn't gonna solve the global refugee problem. It wasn't gonna make a dent in the global refugee problem. They had to pay his transport to the US. They had to provide him a job for a year. They had to pledge support for him for a year. Uh, and it wasn't going to solve any problem. But they did it. They decided to put that drop in that bucket. And uh, so Vladislav Kostrovovich sailed to the U.S., took a train to Oregon. Um, he decided after coming to the U.S. that the name Vladislav Kostrovovich was completely unworkable in the U.S. Partly it had three Z's in his last name. And so he shortened it to Kristoff. It's my dad. So take it from me, truly, drops in the bucket. That is how we can fill buckets together, okay? Uh, I'd love to take questions. Thanks very much.